Pepper says, are you ready to declutter another section in this hoarded basement? I know I am. <laughs> It is that time of the week again. It is time to declutter another section in this hoarded basement. And we have been doing an amazing job opening the back section of this hoarded space. Now, this is what we did last week. And I feel in my gut that maybe we should move over here <laughs> because this is a hot mess and I feel like let's just complete that back section of the basement and clear it out. Now, some of the bins over here, these are the labeled keep bins from previous declutters. Behind that, you can see the empty tubs from the yard sale. And then over that is the play area. So we'll continue to chop away here and it'd be pretty cool to have this entire back end of the basement decluttered and emptied out. So when I get started, to avoid getting very overwhelmed with the amount of stuff I have to go through, I start with the easiest thing I can to clutter. And for today, it's actually this trash right here on the floor. It's this broken margarita cup and this right here. This is our first official Tossy Tossy. Now over here are some collage frames that I created back in college, so that's very sentimental. I'll wipe them down and store them in that proper bin. Next, I'm going to let go of this mop because I already have a mop that I enjoy and use upstairs, so there's no need to have two of them. I can let this go. Next are these outdoor Christmas wreaths. Now, I'm going to be doing a big Kamari method on all the Christmas decorations, probably in the beginning of November. So I'm going to put this in the Christmas cave where all those tubs and decorations live. Now, here is the bottom to that margarita lid. So that's a tossy tossy. And underneath of this old sewing machine is just more trash that look like it kind of got funneled back over here. So we have to clear this section out. Now, Pepper the decluttering kitty, she is checking out the space since I can't get back there. And she confirms that yes, indeed, there is trash back there. So let's get started with this first box right here. Now I can tell you that this box right here definitely is very, very old and safe to let this all go. A matter of fact, it's so old that this receipt right here says 1997. Yes, you're reading that right. So you might be wondering, why do hoarders seem to hold on to trash? This should be something easy to let go of. And honestly, it took me a while to get to that point. And there's multiple reasons as to why we hold on to it. One reason is that we're trying to be resourceful, keep stuff out of a landfill in hopes that we can turn some kind of trash into treasure, DIY, Pinterest board, you name it. We want to recreate it into something new again. But the problem is that sometimes there's just too many projects that there's just never enough time to create it all. Another reason why we might hold on to trash is also because it's just so incredibly overwhelming to even start. A lot of us are dealing with low self-esteem and even depression. So a lot of that inner conflict is that we're already feeling ashamed and putting ourselves down because we truly know that we should let this go. But at the same time, it keeps us safe and self-soothes us. So we just kind of give up and leave it there because the pain of working through those emotions just feel so deep. And then there's some of us that it's honestly just what we know because we started hoarding back in our childhood and we're almost blind to the messes and the clutter and the overflow because it doesn't bother us when it brings us security. It's similar to a non-hoarder looking at a beautiful field of flowers. You would never say, oh, that's too many flowers. We got to toss them all out or there's just too much sand on this beach. We really got to get rid of it. Your brain and nervous system has programmed itself that this abundance of flowers and sand and in these areas is a beautiful thing. Those exact feelings you get when you see thousands and thousands of flowers in a field and millions of grain of sand on the beach is the same emotion that we feel towards our stuff because a lot of times it's bringing back memories and making us feel good like this box right here. This box, there's a lot of old Christmas stuff and 
the nostalgia and the memories that I'm getting from this, it's just so wonderful and it self-soothes any type of stress or anxiety or panic or PTSD that I'm feeling. And the chemicals in our brain are just wired this way that this is how we self-soothe. Now, this right here is my father's and he gave it to Brandon because Brandon loves music, but he also likes records and CDs and he kind of wants to play all that old stuff. So my dad gave this to him and I really would like to set up an area down here for him to play with. So for now, I'm going to have to put this to the side because I'd really like to have it in this entertainment center right here. This was also my father's and I thought I was strong enough to let it go, but there were still emotional strings. And if there's any way that I can refurbish this to work, just like it did in my dad's house, there's a lot of cleaning to do, but man, that would be such a wonderful feeling. Now let's get back to under the sewing machine because yes, there is more trash. I recognize it and it's all going to be a tossy tossy. Now for me personally, many of you know that I started by being bullied in school and then was in a very abusive relationship in my teen years. That's what really created my hoarding and my things as my security. When I came home from school, when I came home from being beaten or verbally abused, I hid in my room and all of my childhood things kept me safe and reminded me of how beautiful and how worthy I was. I knew my stuff was not going to hurt me. Now, as a child and a teenager, it was only the things that I was holding on to. I could still let go of plastic bags and containers and trash. I could still identify what was trash and what was not. The issue is that when it is constantly self-soothing you, the lines start to get blurred. The definition of what is trash and what is not trash start to blend in. The bag of hangers once gave me security and I could give you a million reasons why I wanted to keep it, but now I can let this go. Same with the empty box. The problem is when your nervous system is triggered and it doesn't feel safe and it's sending all the alarms because I'm scared, I'm anxious, I'm depressed, whatever. It's saying, oh, I know what to do. We're going to hoard. That's protect us each and every time since childhood. We're going to hoard even more to self-soothe. And the packaging that that item came in, that's self-soothing too. And so is the bag that it came in and the gift bag and the tissue paper and the packages and the paper, it's all self-soothing. And the trash has the same value as something sentimental because it's creating the same self-soothing effects as the valuable items. The nervous system doesn't recognize that it's trash anymore. It's just recognizing it as a self-soothing item. And our brains are shooting off those chemicals like, let's hoard, let's hoard, let's hoard. Still not enough. We're still not calm yet. Okay, let's keep hoarding. There's no limit until it feels good. Until my body and nervous system are like, okay, we're done. We're calm. And it worked. And then my nervous system takes that information, puts it into the data bank, and it's ready for the next catastrophe because it knows what to do. And our nervous system is just protecting us when we go into those fight or flight mode. And however we coded ourselves in childhood and growing up over and over again, that's what it recognizes. That's why I have to make these decisions emotionally and do baby step decluttering and let go of what feels right in my heart because I am reconditioning that nervous system that I'm still safe if I let all of this go, I can still continue on to my day with happiness and peace without triggering an over-the-top panic attack. And there are many other reasons why somebody would hoard trash and feel the need to do so. I just want people to really understand the mindset behind hoarding disorder and also to let other people know that you're not alone in those emotions and behaviors. And I really want you to know that you can recover in this because this is today's tossy tossy pile and it is a lot of stuff. Most of it is going to get recycled as best as you can. But in previous years, this would have been too much for me to let go of in one shot. It would have been debilitating to my day. 
but with consistency, doing it every week and having the love and support of all of you, my YouTube family, it's the only way that it's possible because you gave me loving acceptance for who I am. And that gave me the strength to continue on. And now Miss Pepper and I get to show you the newly cleaned out space in the basement. We decluttered another chunk. There was a lot of stuff crammed into that small space. And we did it. We cleared it out. We still have some work to do, but that's okay. We're gonna be in this moment of how we really emptied a lot of this stuff out. And as we continue to chop away at the clutter, it does get easier and easier. There's less decisions to make because look, that's empty tubs right there. And then we're in the play area. And very soon, this back end of the basement is going to be completely cleared out. That is crazy. I don't think it's been cleared out like this since we've moved. <laughs> but I just want you to know that if you struggle with hoarding disorder, you are definitely not alone in this. And my hope and my prayer is that this video encouraged and motivated you to declutter something in your house today too.